Uh, so the last couple of sessions have been around sales transformation, obviously. But when I think about the, the two companies that precede this presentation, they, I, when, I, when I think about LinkedIn and I think about HubSpot, I really think about content. I think about content marketing. I think about engagement. That's really what we're going to talk about over the next 30 minutes. Uh, how those two work together, how they fit together, and how they actually drive business leads and business objectives for small businesses. I'd like to start by apologizing. That title slide you saw, I think I really got the title all wrong. I said social local, and I think that was too self-limiting, and then I forgot to update it. Really, we're talking about a bigger idea here. We're talking about content and engagement, content marketing and engagement marketing, how those work together, and social's a big part of that. And both Joel from Constant Contact and Chris from Surefire Social are going to talk a lot about social media and social media marketing, but they're going to talk about it within a bigger construct, and that is how content drives all of that, and then what sort of engagement is, is trying to be spurred here, sort of what's the, the business objective. So I want to think about it from a broader perspective, because we get all caught up in these definitional constructs and confusion about how is social marketing different than engagement marketing and different than content marketing. Content is the guiding principle that these guys are going to talk about. It drives engagement, and social is a factor in that. It's a signal. So a little bit of grounding, some data, because that's what we do, to sort of size the opportunity, give you a sense and a flavor of what's going on in the SMB marketplace. Um, if you look at this, media used, channels used by SMBs uh, for advertising and promotion here, six of the top ten channels are now digital. So we talk about digital migration. I mean, that's pretty obvious, right? They're using fewer traditional channels. They're using more digital channels. The more interesting thing is, of those six channels that are digital, all of them are owned media. So when we talk about this movement from traditional paid advertising, paying for placement, mediated access to somebody else's audience, still plays a role in the overall media mix, but we're really talking about that owned and earned media paradigm shift here, where every single one of these digital channels that's being adopted at this level, the ones in blue there, are something that the SMB, the local business, in some way owns. It's theirs, it's their brand, it's their content, they're responsible for it, and that creates both opportunity and challenge for them. Of those six digital channels, all of which are owned media, four of those six are social media channels. And of course, within all of these owned media channels, whether it's email or it's all the social channels you see on here, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc., there's a great opportunity and a natural environment there for earned media. That earned media being user-generated content, whether that's referrals or recommendations or ratings or, or liking or, or whatever the signal might be. So this is the continued move. I mean, I'm saying this like this is revolutionary. This has been happening for years, right? It just continues to manifest itself in our data and what you're seeing with what businesses are doing and what they tell you they want and they need from you, you know, wave over wave as we look at this. So this is kind of an eye chart. As Rick said earlier, we're good at these. Um, Importance of websites with customer opinions. So let's go a little bit deeper into these owned media channels that enable earned media, something the SMB, the local business controls, that then allows this user-generated content that I talked about to take place. I really just want you to focus on the green, the purple, and the blue, the top three boxes in each of these bar charts for each of these owned media channels. It's basically looking at an importance threshold. How important are these channels to these small, medium, or local businesses why do they want to be on them? And they're basically telling us that there's a very high importance threshold of these channels that enable this customer interaction and this user-generated content. 60% or more with really every single one of these. If you talk about Facebook and Google, it's probably closer to 70 or 75% of local businesses that consider them in at least some way to be important to their business. Now here's where the gap exists. And here's where I think Joel and Chris have a powerful message about how to use content and social, to create engagement, to create and, and drive real business objectives. Because I just showed you there's energy and there's adoption and there's perception of importance about using all of these owned and earned media channels. And then you look at the ROI assessments on them based on what they're putting in, what they're actually investing, and these aren't very good. Email marketing is 22nd out of, I think, 37 media or 38 media, correct me if I'm wrong, that we survey. Facebook page is 23rd, and you can read them. Tw YouTube is 28th. Twitter is 35th. I and mean, this is without using this disparagingly, this is down with some traditional media sources that are very hard to track and measure at all. So we've got a gap here, right? Why is that where it is? SMBs want to be here, they want to use these channels, and yet these channels aren't performing for them. So we've got to identify the gap, and we've got to figure out how to solve that gap. And I think that's really where our guys come in today. And so I want to bring up Joel Hughes from Constant Contact to kick us off, and then Chris Marentis from Surefire Social will follow. 
Uh, constant contact has been a big part of this community for a long time. Uh, in email marketing, in engagement marketing, and in a variety of other opportunities and areas as well. And Joel is driving strategy, driving corporate development, been in the space 20 years between tech and mobile and local, and I think has a really cool message about very small businesses here. Chris is going to talk more, more about national to local, but the message here is really about that very small business segment, and I'll turn it over to Joel. Great. Thanks, Jed. Uh, as he said, uh, we're going to sort of switch gears from sales forces to really small businesses. Uh, for those of you that don't know Constant Contact, um, we have about 600,000 uh, small business customers. We've um, primarily been known for email marketing, but have a set of tools, online SaaS tools, that allow small businesses to be better marketers. And, excuse me, as we talk about engagement, that's really the theme for, for our company, and it's really about how do small businesses engage with customers and prospects. We try to make that very, very, very simple. Historically, email marketing has been something they've understood. There's been a solid ROI. It's not recognized maybe as much as uh, it should be based on your research. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, but clearly, in the last couple of years, social has become a very hot area and an area of tremendous interest to small businesses. So if we uh, spin back the time machine here a couple of years, um, and looking at your uh, investment uh, numbers from, from yesterday, I think we saw how there was tremendous investment in the area of social particularly at the enterprise level. A lot of acquisitions going on, a lot of hype uh, around what social is going to uh, do for marketing. And we saw the same kind of interest with SMBs. So if we look here um, at some research we've done, as well as others, we've seen tremendous interest in and demand for social media marketing. So as small businesses think about sort of converting what's been historical word of mouth, their best referral source, a free source of referrals, right? Face-to-face, -face, friends recommending restaurants that are local or a local um, you know, masseuse. Um, really try to take that online, trying to take that social and capture that same word of mouth to drive, obviously, prospects and then repeat customers has been tremendously interesting to them. That being said, you know, we rolled out a product called Social Campaigns um, almost two years ago, a great online SaaS tool, um, you know, free trial. You can get going very quickly. We saw tremendous demand at the top of the funnel. And over the course of sort of, uh, I'd say, 2012 um, uh, in particular, we saw you know, a lot of people on the SMB side digging into social media marketing. Um, and yet, you know, a whole bunch of open questions, right? What really are the results that they're trying to achieve, right? Am I trying to get more fans? Am I trying to get likes? You know, do those turn into customers? How do I measure that? Um, a lot of, as we know, small businesses are, are very time-starved, often sort of task-focused. So not knowing what the task of social media was all about, how do I do social media marketing? Um, we saw a lot of activity, a lot of demand, and not a lot of success. The other thing I'd say here, um, we're noting in our customer base, um, sort of starting fan count here, our customers have a very small number of fans generally, right? These are small businesses. Um, our average small business has more than 1,000 uh, email contacts on their list, but they only have you know, fewer than 100 fans. So you sort of have this, this starting point where you've got a relatively small audience, even smaller than the audience you've built over time through your direct you know, opt-in marketing for email, which, um, which really needs to be expanded and then obviously leveraged to get results. So what we did was we looked at this and we said, well, you know, how is social media marketing going to work for small business? You know, at Constant Contact, we're very focused on delivering solutions that can drive meaningful value for our customers. And we talked to Facebook, we talked to some other, uh, I'd say, vendors in the area as well, um, you know, a year, year and a half ago, and everyone's sort of seen the same thing. We have, you have owned media in terms of your Facebook page, but you're not doing anything with it. It's sort of like, you know, owning a house and not maintaining it. You don't really know, um, nobody's coming to visit, and uh, it's getting pretty dilapidated at this point. So we really talked um, about how we could, uh, instead of just driving features into our tool set, um, how we could really find the recipe for small uh, business social media marketing uh, success. And really, we took uh, a few hypotheses. Um, we've got a, a method at Cons and Conduct that we use. Uh, we have innovation teams who do testing in, in new product areas, both on, on the acquisition side, on the marketing side. And really, we, we formed a team to go off and test whether the issue here was SMBs didn't know what to do. They didn't have confidence to do that. If we gave them a recipe, could they be successful? Do we need to buy Facebook ads to make this successful? 
um, do we need to do the service for them because they're not ready to do this? They don't know how to use the tools because they're not sure um, about this whole social thing. So we really put this into a small box and said, well, we're going to test Facebook only first. And we're going to go after you know, a small number of customers. And we're going to run this test for, we've been doing it for uh, about nine months now. So a meaningful test. And what we wanted to do was see if we could prove that there was a recipe for success, which we have proven. So with regular posting, with the use of campaigns, which is our social campaigns product to do, whether it's sweepstakes or downloadables or coupons, calls to action on Facebook for social marketing, um, and some ad spend, some very modest ad spend, is that a recipe for success? And the answer is resoundingly yes. So my, in a couple slides, I'll show you some results from a specific um, customer of ours in a case study. Uh, but fundamentally, uh, you know, a few things came to play here. One was, um, and having been in the email marketing business for so long, there was a time when people didn't really know how to email market, right? People didn't know um, what the results should be. They didn't know what open rates should look like, certainly at the small business level. And over a long period of time, people have become comfortable with that and understanding there's a return on investment there um, and knowing how to do that themselves. So a big part of this is getting these SMBs started. So as we do the do it for me service, in some cases we just do that for a couple of months. They see how this works and then they can back off and just use our do it yourself tools. So we've seen that for a portion of our, of our trialers here. We've also seen a number of customers who say, yeah, I really want to outsource this because it does need to, it needs to be maintained. You need to keep posting this stuff, right? Three or four posts a week, um, thinking about what kind of campaigns to run and then what should those results be, whether I'm trying to drive my fan count up, maybe I'm trying to capture email addresses, um, and build my list for other communications channels. So really, um, we've done a bunch of work to prove that this uh, can work and does work if done um, diligently. And this uh, slide gives a rundown of uh, thirsty cat fountains. So if you've got a thirsty cat, we've got a great uh, customer who can provide you with um, uh, thirst quenching ceramics for your animal. Um, and what we did here was, you can see the interaction of email marketing and Facebook uh, social media marketing. So in this case, Thirsty Cat had an email uh, address uh, list of 1,400 contacts. And really, they, they launched this campaign both on email and on Facebook for social. And it's a sweepstakes with a call to action being you know, registered to be uh, a potential winner of this fountain. And what we saw was you know, dramatic improvement um, in Facebook likes and shares and ultimately um, the growth of not just their Facebook presence, but also their email subscriber list, right? We see a 423 uh, new email subscribers, you know, achieved through this campaign. So we're capturing email addresses in order to, uh, to opt people into these sweepstakes. So one of the things we found as we did this, and a bit to Jed's point really was, you know, it's not just social, right? Social ends up being a channel here. The campaign is the sweepstakes. This campaign we send over email and we send it, you know, in this case to Facebook and we'll send it, you know, over other social channels and elsewhere over time. And really, you know, using these different channels to deliver the same content, and in this case, um, sweepstakes promotion, um, is really what we're trying to achieve on behalf of the small business. And making it easy for them to do that uh, across these channels is increasingly our focus. So instead of having independent products tied to channels, and in some ways when you think about your, your research, looking at you know, which of these channels do I want to be active on and which of these channels are, you know, do I have products to deliver through, we want to make that much simpler to say, hey, I want to do a sweepstakes, I'm going to run that cross channel, I'm going to be able to aggregate these results, right? And we're also seeing tremendous use um, as we look forward into paid media here, right? The, we've been spending uh, only up to $25 a month for these, for these campaigns. So that's been our, our Facebook ad spend. Um, the ability to do email address targeting and or lookalike targeting, for example, now on Facebook, allows that email address asset to be tremendously valuable in better targeting of even the Facebook paid media ad spend. So more and more we're seeing the integration of these delivery channels and the data that results from them, um, both to deliver better results as well as uh, report them to SMBs. And we're seeing that um, as we break down the mystery behind social media marketing, and in many cases, literally need to do the work for the SMBs because they're not capable, they don't have time, they don't have the capability, um, they can have success. Awesome. Okay. So we need 30 minutes of Q&A. We have three minutes. But, uh, but sit on down. <laughs> okay. or Come here, I guess. Um, 
I, I, I mean, this is going to 10 minute answer probably, but you got about 60 seconds. Um, I, I think we got to start there though. I mean, because when I think about constant contact and I think a, a lot of people in the room think about constant contact, they think of you and they think DIY, you yeah. know, very low price point, very high retention overall, right. uh, industry standard in a lot of ways there and great customer service, great customer mm -hmm. support, but that's on the back end. It's a DIY process. And now you're talking about something that's fundamentally different, which is managed service. And so I'm, what I'm getting at here is, one, how did something like social and more generally content marketing, how has that overall changed your view about DIY versus DIFM? And are we talking about a whole paradigm shift for you guys? Or are you still sort of in the, let's tinker and experiment and see, depending on type of business, channel mm -hmm. selection, et cetera, how deep we move into this? Yeah, well, I'd say that uh, that's a good question. I think that. Um, we're definitely still tinkering and testing, as we, we always do that. But I would say that uh, it isn't um, particular to social, to your point. In this right. case, yeah. I think we did see that because when you think about you know, new techniques, in this case, new social media, what does that mean for SMBs? Right? SMBs are always going to be sort of late to the game on this stuff. Right? All the stuff that we see playing out the enterprise a year or two, three, five later mm -hmm. sort of boils down where, where uh, SMBs are able to really digest that and take advantage, I think. So our core business continues to be building great, easy to use online tools that allow people to do it, do it yourself. Um, however, we've certainly recognized that in the case of a new technology or a new social uh, media area in this case, people need not just coaching, which we've done for a long time, and you know, best practices, information, and content marketing, which we, we've always done very well. Um, some of them want it done for them. Yep. Some of them want, we, we sort of look at do it yourself, do it with assistance, mm -hmm. and do it for me as sort of the three, let's call them buckets. And um, clearly, I'd say when you think about the complexity of social, local, mobile, yeah. the confluence of all these things we're talking about here um, this week, it's a lot of new stuff. Yeah. It's a lot coming out of small business. A lot of vendors coming out of small business. It's a lot of new technology and um, really making that work. Um, we certainly are always going to test into proving this stuff is, it does work and it can be done cost effectively and deliver real value. So we're always going to do that ourselves. And the question becomes, can we turn that into a tool? How many people are ready for that? Yeah. And increasingly we're considering, you know, whether we, whether we or through partners sure. um, deliver, you know, full service. Okay. I'm going to cheat and get one more minute here and ask okay. you about paid. Um, it's, it's interesting how a lot of the conversation when you talked about owned and earned a couple of years ago was just this big retreat away from traditional paid advertising, paid placement into all of these own channels, the earned media that comes off of that. And now we're sort of Go, I don't want to say we're reverse engineering, but we're going back and injecting new forms of paid advertising back into the mix mm -hmm. to sort of close this loop. How big is that play for you guys at this stage in the sense of is a paid part of a campaign going to be there for every SMB, just certain types of SMB? How big is the bet on paid being a necessary part of, of this solution that you're creating? Um, I would say that, uh, you know, we're looking into it, right? Okay. So uh, I think that... Um, it does depend on the kind of business we think about. You know, we've got a lot of B2Cs, B2Bs, nonprofits. Nonprofits a huge segment for us, actually. Yeah. So, um, but social is a great thing for nonprofit. For example, paid media on social for nonprofits is a super use case, right? So, I think that there are opportunities for all business types and nonprofits to use paid media um, to expand the reach of their campaigns and their marketing messages. Okay. Right? So, I think that's happening certainly in mobile. I think when you think about small business, you think much more about local and the local mobile targeting stuff that's happening, what's happening on social. Um, I believe the, the big problem has been, can we get uh, at cost effective spend for a small business? Yeah. Can you get results? Yeah. And um, that's what we're spending, targeting you're talking about. That's right? where we're yeah. spending most of our time. And we realize, you know, with such a large customer base and our customers are creating content marketing calls to action all the time, mm -hmm. right on our platform yeah. with our do it yourself tools, the opportunity for them to potentially, you know, amplify that message through paid media is something that um, seems to make a lot of sense. Okay, good. Now we're out of time. Please join okay. me in thanking Joel. Good job. Thank you. So that's the very small business perspective. And let's look at it more from the national to local activation perspective. And that can be brand and enterprise. That can be franchise, independent dealer, manufacturer network. This is sort of the big upstream space here that includes a lot when we talk about national to local. And I think this guy is really well positioned to talk about content, engagement, social marketing, national to local. Chris Morentis is the CEO of Surefire Social. Chris has got a big media background, AOL, uh, technology as well, but also has worked on the agency side. So can talk about this from the buy side and the sell side and what Surefire is up to from both a platform and a service perspective to deliver national to local content marketing in an effective sort of lead gen uh, manner. So I'll turn it over to Chris Marentis. Thanks, Jay. That's an awesome tee up. 
I see a, pe a lot of people on computers. Is anybody tweeting or posting or anything? Happy holidays, by the way. I think I'm the first speaker to say happy holidays. Everybody. We're all Grinches here. So right. you should uh, hashtag leading in local and say happy holidays from BIA Kelsey in San Francisco. Let's kind of have some holiday spirit. All right, the reason why we're interested in national to local is if you think about the whole opportunity with social and with Web 2.0 in general, it's the wisdom of the crowd. It's the power of moving a crowd, right? So what we'd like to focus on, and we're really pursuing heavily, is this idea of working with national businesses that have to um, that have the opportunity to harness the power of independent businesses that they depend on to build volume for themselves, like uh, dealers or franchises or contractors, and get them pulling in the same direction with a strategy, national to local, leveraging all these social tools that we're talking about. So number one, it requires integrating services. And that would require a whole new presentation on doing that, but I can tell you it means more than uh, a dashboard. Number two, cross-platform publishing. Um, and the idea of not just you know, organizing publishing and creating the whole creative process about publishing, but data and workflow. Secondly, strategic partnerships. There's a lot of great uh, companies downstairs. The part, many of them are our partners, but getting those partners to do things, magical things with their APIs and their technologies and integrate them in. And for us, one of the biggest things is local coaching. And um, we like to have people, we call them coaches at the local level, working with the entrepreneurs to be able to take those strategies at a national level and get them working at a local level in a consistent way. So many of you guys may recognize this guy. I was this guy in 1981 at an agency called Young and Rubicam in New York when I started my career. It was a tail end of that golden age of, of, uh, of advertising. And uh, we had a, a, an account there called Kentucky Fried Chicken. And at that point, we had to have a field service organization that could take our national campaigns and educate those entrepreneurs, those KFC franchises, to be able to take the national ads, the TV, radio, print ads, the in-store displays, the uh, script for the kid at the cash register, and consistently implement them to create the power of that network in traditional media. Well, today, it's a lot harder to do. We all know that. That's what we've been talking about for the last day and a half. There's so much complexity with the different layers of, um, of social media and websites and mobile sites and directories. And by the way, they all have to be updated regularly. So we know that this is a big challenge for these big national marketers. A recent study showed that over 50% of them Oh, have, lack the resources. They say they lack the resources, the bandwidth to execute local properly. Almost 40% of them say that they uh, struggle with the logistics of keeping up with all these different pieces of it. And sadly, under 10% of them are able to deploy a national campaign in less than three days. And if you think about categories that are seasonal in nature or retail in nature, that's a real problem. So we use what we call technology-enabled services platform to help execute this for this national to local campaign. But for us, it all starts, and our DNA starts with a relationship. And abstracting away the national to local part and just focusing on how do you work with local businesses to do this, um, it starts with what we call a coach that gets to really know that business in a really meaningful way, what their objectives are, what their history is, how, what have they done before. And then we take our cloud and we, able, we, we use workflow and systems and process to be able to create, manage, plan content, get data and, you know, and other things from that content reporting to optimize that campaign. And then create a publishing platform to publish into the websites, mobile sites, social media and directories and do that regularly. And we all know that being visible requires consistency in lots of different places. Some of these charts that, that Jed showed earlier uh, demonstrates that. The other thing is we know social media is becoming more important. It's more important because it's a great way to promote content that we create and get engagement with it. And to the degree we're able to get engagement with that content, we're going to create really good signals for websites. So kind of landing the plane for a second, what do we do? We create a national website, in this case for a client of ours, Gutter Helmet, that's dealer focused with you know, structural things that help us create some on-page SEO opportunities and a publishing and digital publishing um, concept behind that. But then we, 
we were able to create child sites, we call child sites with that, that hang off the same URL structure, but can be customized at the local level where we have that coach working with them to customize it and add to it. Then we do the same thing with social. In this case, it's showing GAF, another client of ours, where we create a, a national platform in Facebook in this case. They have 150,000 likes. And by the way, that creates a great place for our local guys to promote their content because all their buddies are there and they're going to share it and comment on it and like it to start to give it some trajectory. And then we focus on local um, aspect of, of marketing for the local Facebook pages that we create. And by the way, you can do, this, you know, do the same thing with Google Plus and Twitter and other types of platforms that will make sense for that. And uh, this slide we wanted to show on purpose when Jed and I were talking about this, you know, gutter protection has got to be one of the least sexy businesses that you could be, be trying to do social media against to try to get some people to engage in. And what we could see here is that you know, doing uh, content that's related to what's going on in that business, in that market, and focusing around things like social causes and other things creates real momentum in terms of likes and sharing and commenting that's been very valuable to make this client really visible. And then directories, everyone knows directories are such an important part of what people have to do. But the technology alone, any piece of technology, the point I want to make with this slide, doesn't do the trick because unless someone's working with that SMB every month to make sure that they're uh, thinking about it and got work, they're developing work, workflow and process in their own company, they're not going to get regular reviews or post pictures or videos. And in this case, you could see this client had a review in the last month. Now, taking a look at um, you know, kind of what does this result in, you, you know, we found that we could have a dramatic impact on our client's business when we employ this type of marketing. This is a, a, local, a local dealer, uh, someone who's been on our platform for about two years. But you can see here in the bottom right corner, um, they, they keep really great data. The three months prior to launching and about 12 months after launching, you could see site visits, visitors, and page views going up dramatically. But that right-hand column, goals, or leads. And those leads increase 7x versus that base level month that we showed. So we're dramatically increasing leads, but what's really interesting about this slide is how we're able to create um, social media, in this case Facebook, as a major, major referral traffic driver to that, to that client's website. And when you look at metrics like time spent and bounce rate on page views, it's really, really valuable um, traffic that converts. And what's great about that traffic is um, is that it, it, uh, it, 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 it's, a, it's the right type of audience for them. The, this next uh, case study is Gutter Helmet, the national company. We launched them about a little over four months ago. They were doing a black box, pay, you know, really paid marketing for that whole company up until we took that over. And they were paying roughly $90 a lead for, um, for the leads that they were getting for all their dealers. Um, now, about four months later, they're paying about $20 a lead. They've got a lot of transparency in what they're doing, and their organic traffic now makes up over 55% of the site visits, and it's growing, and their conversion rate is doing really well. So, so the, the, uh, this notion of being able to harness the wisdom of the crowd and get all these the national local working in the same direction to have a dramatic impact on a client's business. Okay, great. So we've got a couple minutes. Uh, I have a lot of takeaways from that presentation. So that means a lot of questions. Um, the first is right there. Lead gen off of content and off of SEO. I mean, the gutter helmet example is a very good example. I mean, to me, that sort of represents a, a paradigm shift unto itself. They were really, to them, digital marketing before you guys, before this was PPC. Right. And their leads were 100 bucks or 90 bucks a lead. I think so often when we think about content marketing, we think of it like cost investment versus the actual lead gen it can create. And here you've actually, I'm framing it more as, more as a statement, but here you've actually used SEO and content marketing in the least sexy business category possible to lower cost per lead. Well, you know, the thing is, is um, measurement so that you could show them what they're getting out of it. And, you know, there's, there's kind of two, two values to social. One is you could, you know, like some of the, the other uh, guests in Facebook and LinkedIn showed, you could get leads right off of those platforms by creating a landing page or something and promoting something, an e-book or whatever. But just being active in those places generates a lot of referral traffic to your website. 
And that's measurable. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what's another, uh, another thing that I think people think about. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to the, the idea of coaches for a second. You know, we had an agency super forum yesterday, and a lot of the, the fundamental debate there was, is the differentiator of an agency business, whether you're a traditional agency, a media company, a marketing solutions provider, whatever, is your differentiator moving forward going to be more on the technology platform side, or is it going to be more on the people side? And for them, people was sellers. For you, the bet is on people with coaches, but the bet is on people first, right, surrounded by technology? De definitely, because the people, you know, the, the problem with business models, and we learned this years ago at the AOL, is bringing people in the front door is uh, half the effort. Yeah. But keeping them, while, keeping them on board while you're bringing more people in is really, really important. So um, retention is so key. And the fact of the matter is, is SMBs don't pay attention. And they'll, they, they, they have a attention span that's you know, because they have other things they're doing. And you have to have consistency with them and get them into a rhythm while you're bringing on, on new people. Mm -hmm. When you bring on these businesses and you get them into a rhythm of creating content, um, and we've got to be quick with this one, but for, for business categories like roofing, and gutter protection. I assume there was probably some doubt by them early on that they could really do what you were talking about in terms yeah. of one, creating anything interesting at all, having a position of thought and leadership and actually using that to drive business. Well, you know what's amazing? There's a lot of content that's going on every month in a business. When you think about new people that join the company, the manufacturer they represent that might have a new, new product coming out that they should be talking about, the Little League team they sponsored, the Wounded Warriors you know, promotion that they're doing. So there's a, they just don't know, they don't have a consciousness of how to think about that as content. Mm -hmm. And the, the job of our coaches is to actually ask them those questions every month to plan that and, and do that. Yeah, great. Okay, we're out of time. Uh, join me in thanking Chris. Well done, Chris. Thanks.